Maybe why don't you ask opposition defenders to stop making stupid challenges in the box? Wouldn't that help? Hi guys and welcome to another week of TFW, the football show dominated by all of your footballing opinions over the weekend. I've got the iPad here, so let's get straight into it. With the first one from Miguel Mangion, who has said Bayern will win the treble. This is after, obviously, they completed the double at the weekend. Um, and with Sane coming in, build a side where the best players want to go and dominate Germany and Europe. Um, I think they want to go to Germany anyway to, to dominate the Bundesliga because Bayern do it every season. Um, and to dominate Europe? Yeah, I don't see why not. I think they've got a great side. And the thing is with Bayern as well, they seem to have managed... Um, they seem to have managed the transition quite well. We've seen a few other clubs who don't manage it too well. Like Manchester United, their transition after Fergie was pretty terrible. It's taken them a few years to get back onto it. Um, Barcelona don't seem to be able to let go of Messi and Suarez. Not that they should, but their transitions are going too well, especially with the Arthur Pjanic thing. So the fact that Bayern have managed to lose the likes of, especially Robben and Ribéry, um, replace them, Coman. Nabri, Sane's coming in now. I think when Lewandowski goes, they've got a few options, including Xerxes, who looks to be a brilliant, um, brilliant player. He goes with Kimmich stepped up into midfield, and Goretzka's there now that Thiago's 29 years old. With all the defenders going out, they've brought in loads more like Hernandez, Pavar, Sula, Afonso Davis. Bayern have really handled this transition well, and I think that is going to put them in good stead, not just to, to win this year, if they do or don't win the treble, but I think moving forwards as well, yeah, you're probably right. Um, I don't know, someone like Kai Havertz could definitely be tempted to go to Bayern. Let's say Muller, you know, decides to leave or, you know, um, goes downhill a bit, even though he's had a fantastic season. I, I don't see any reason why not. Yeah, I kind of agree with you, Miguel. Uh, next up, Cristiano Ronaldo. Obviously not the Cristiano Ronaldo. If it is, glad you're a fan of the show. Um, it says, opinion. <laughs> and it's about Messi as well. If Barcelona wants to prepare for the future, they need to let go of Lionel Messi. Of course, Ronaldo thinks that. Uh, because I feel like they're kind of spoiled with having Messi. He is in his prime and now can't do much that he used to. I'm not a Messi hater, just give me my opinion. What are your thoughts? Um, hold on. If he's in his prime, that means he's in his best years. Do you mean past his prime? Um, now he can't do much that he used to do. I'm not quite sure what you're on about. Lionel Messi is top of the goal scoring and assist charts in La Liga. He now has um, a record uh, for his own career record high of assists in La Liga with 19. Um, involved in 41 goals and assists this season. And yeah, I'm not quite sure they need to let go of him just yet. He's still proving he's still at an unbelievable level for Barca. And the rest of the team around him is not actually that good or certainly as good as the teams that Messi's played in Barcelona beforehand. So if anything, I think he's doing even better than the last few years. Uh, he's definitely in his prime and no, they do not need to let him go. While Messi can still do those things, there is no reason for Barcelona to let him go. And I don't think he will leave. Um, I will point out to you, Mr. Ronaldo, and by the way, Ronaldo is an unbelievable player. I'm not throwing any shade or anything like that. Uh, he's got 30 goals and assists this season in the league. Doing incredible, by the way. He's got 25 and 26 goals-wise. The first Juve player to score more than 25 in a Serie A season in like 50-odd years. Um, but 11 behind Messi, so... I'm not sure they do need to let him go. That would be a very bizarre option. Uh, next up, Arnik Akash has said, do you think anyone outside top five leagues to win the Champions League ever again? This is difficult. You look at the top teams in, in the top five leagues, so Spain, Italy, England, Germany, France. The top teams are so good, have so much power, so much money, such good squads that it would be very difficult for it to happen. I mean, the Ajax thing last year was incredible. That seems to be a one-off. Like, I mean... You guys could tell me off the top of my head. The last time someone from outside the top five leagues was in a semi-final in the Champions League. God, that's a great quiz question. I'm going to have to say when Porto won it back in 2004. Or when Monaco in it. Oh, potentially even Malaga. Oh no, they're in Spain. And Monaco are in France. I'm waffling. Anyway, uh, yes, I believe Porto... Um, <laughs> In, back in 2004 when they won it, it was incredible, though I'm, I'm going to say they didn't have the strongest of opposition. Yes, they may have been good at the time, but compared to some of the opposition now, they did not have some of the strongest opposition. Poor 2004, you had Ajax who did very well in 1995 and Belgrade a few years before that as well. But aside from that, if I had to put money on it, it would be one of those two. It would be someone from Holland or Portugal. Um, I'm not quite sure Russia or Belgium 
really going to be able to put together a squad strong enough. And the thing is, you're not just knocking out teams over a group stage. You're then going through another, what is it, three rounds, like seven matches to win it. That's going to be tough. I don't think so, uh, unfortunately, Arnick. Um, the Reyes 11 no, 406 Reyes has said, do you think Barca should try and win both La Liga and Champions League, or should they concede La Liga and focus on the Champions League? They, of course, should try to win both, and they don't need to concede one because they're not overlapping. It's not like they've got to um, balance the schedule between the two. Um, La Liga is finished whenever it's finished, end of July, beginning of August. Um, and the Champions League starts again um, around the 7th or 8th of August because Barcelona have their second leg against Napoli to play. Um, so yeah, they don't need to, to, to concede one to focus on the other. I think they should focus on Champions League because they've got more chance because at the moment it's looking unlikely that they will be able to take over Real Madrid in La Liga. Having said that, there's still a few games to play and they're only four points behind. Um, but just the way things look at the moment, yeah. I don't think, even if you think they are doing it, they're not. They're a professional football team at the top of the elite level of European football. Um, they're definitely not going out to not really win La Liga matches and not really care. But it's not what football teams do. Um, next up, Bodhi Thomas. So this is a strong one. Gabriel Jesus and Raheem Sterling are overrated. Here we go. Let's, let's try and get some facts behind this. They only score tap-ins. That's a solid fact. Um, there is no problem with only scoring tap-ins. So why did you say it then? Uh, but they miss so many clear-cut chances. Again, that's not factual, that's an opinion. Their passing and touch is dreadful and they can't take set pieces. Again, that's just an opinion, <laughs> not a fact at all. Um, and also, not everyone needs to take set pieces. In fact, it causes less arguments in the dressing room if you just say Kevin De Bruyne is the best, let him take it. Um, the only reason they get goals in the first place is because phenomenal delivery from David Silva, Bernardo Silva and Kevin De Bruyne. Well, obviously, I don't, I don't get what your point is. So you're saying the only reason people rate Sterling and Jesus is because an awesome player plays an awesome pass and then they get in a position and kick it in the back of the net. Well, isn't, isn't that what they're supposed to do? Doesn't that make them rated? I'm not quite sure what your beef is for Manchester City players here. Uh, maybe you're a Man United fan. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, actually, I don't think many people overrate Gabriel Jesus. I don't think anyone's saying that he's a top-level player. I think everyone knows he's never going to be Aguero's level. Um, Raheem Sterling is not overrated. What he's going to contribute to Manchester City is ridiculous. He's four times the player he was when he left Liverpool. Um, and yeah, I think you're just sort of picking on stuff here. They only score tap-ins. Raheem Sterling scored some banging goals, by the way. And Gabriel Jesus needs to be in those positions. As I've said a million times before on this channel, Gabriel Jesus is a striker. He's supposed to be as close to the goal as possible when the team's got the ball to put the ball in the back of the net. If they're attacking at the edge of the box and Gabriel Jesus is 40 yards back saying, quick, give it me. I'm on the halfway line, I'm gonna shoot. Something has gone terribly, terribly wrong in Manchester City's build-up play. Um, yeah, it sounds like a lot of nonsense. Sorry, Bodie. Uh, Nick Stria. Oh, this is an interesting one because this person, Nick, if you're out there, Nick's, um, keeps on, I don't think he understands the word biased. So I said, just wanted to ask Matt, what does he say now about Real Madrid? Another penalty controversy. You're gonna say that this happens? Well, this happened with Spurs, that was fun. Just reply me, please. I feel like I saw you comment about, oh Matt, you didn't speak about Real Madrid's controversy when you spoke about Lucas Moura after the last Sheffield United thing. A few of you said this. Let's get this straight. Bias means that I'm favoring one team, preferably my team, Tottenham, over, um, over facts which clearly point in the opposite direction. One, this was not the case, because like 99% of the comment section said that it was a foul on Lucas, so it shouldn't have been a handball. And secondly, everyone was saying that, why didn't you mention Real Madrid? Because I didn't. I wasn't talking about Real Madrid. I was talking about Tottenham. I mean, every time I mention the VAR decision, I can't rattle through every single team that weekend who's come across a decision. I would if they were similar. I, I get your point there. I would if they were similar, um, but this Lucas Moura being fouled and then someone kicking the ball against his hand is vastly, vastly different to a penalty being given away or someone standing on someone's toe, um, which is what happened in, in the Real Madrid thing. Another pen penalty controversy. I feel like with Real Madrid these days, someone could get their arm chopped off in the penalty box and people still say it's controversial. I said it in the Daily News earlier on Monday, um, at a slow rate, it looks worse and they pinpoint the frame where there's contact and it looks worse than at full speed. Uh, sorry, it looks worse at full speed, the contact. When it's minimal, it's still a penalty. He stood on his toe. Ramos did the same thing to Raul Garcia and if that was given as a penalty, 
I, yeah, I think that would have also been a penalty as well. I mean, I'm not sure why the officials didn't give it. Maybe because they were, it, it didn't look so bad or Ramos wasn't looking in the right direction or the ball wasn't necessarily in the same place um, or to be won in the same sort of area that was with Marcelo. Uh, what does it say about Real Madrid? If it's a penalty, it's a penalty. I've said it before, I don't care what minute it's in. I don't care if there's been 10 penalties in the game beforehand. Or I don't care if Real Madrid or Barcelona get a penalty from now until every single game for the next 10 years. If it's a penalty, you give it. Those are the rules. You don't think about what happened last game. You don't think about how many have been given or what minute it is. End of conversation. Um, and yeah, it, it was a penalty. Maybe, this is a thought. Maybe why don't you ask opposition defenders to stop making stupid challenges in the box? Wouldn't that help? Or even so, and I know a lot of people are saying, oh, Manchester City's fifth goal was ruled out for handball, but you didn't talk about it, Matt. Bias, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, because it was already 4-0. And, and don't get me wrong, I, I think it should be given. As I said, regardless of the minute, regardless of the scoreline, it should be given. But it's clear that it does have much more of an impact. So, yeah. If, if Barcelona fans or whoever you support Nick Trier um, are really angry that Real Madrid got an unfair penalty, blah, blah, blah. Maybe Athletic Bilbao should have scored a few and it wouldn't have been such a difference. Um, right, Zonda, up next. Do you think Thomas Tuchel is a good manager? I think he's a great manager. Funny his PSG defence doesn't mess up. I do think Tuchel is a good manager. I just think the PSG is a poison chalice. Everything good that he did at Mainz and then Dortmund and then moving to PSG... It's so easily overlooked because it's so it's almost so difficult to congratulate a manager when they win the title with PSG. If I sat here and did, even if I did like a whole separate video saying, Thomas Tuchel did this and this and he implemented this system and these tactics and PSG were brilliant in Liga and they won the title, everyone would say, well, duh, of course they did. All you have to do is put Neymar and Mbappe on the field and they win you 90% of the games. So I think it's very easy to be overlooked as a good manager when you're with especially PSG or with such a dominant side in a league. Um, and yeah, you're right, unfortunately, in French football, you can't win. If you're PSG, you can only meet expectations or fail. If you win, you've met the expectation of what everyone thinks you're doing. If you don't, all hell breaks loose. And it comes down to a few games in the Champions League. I mean, the draw hasn't been made. I think it's made on Friday. If you're watching this on Friday, that's today. Uh, Friday the 10th of July. So PSG will find out who they've got in the quarterfinals after beating Dortmund. Um, and I think Tuchel is a good manager. I'd love to see him elsewhere as well. Definitely. I think he's going to have a great career. Um, Mayowa has said, also, Real wouldn't have won as many trophies as they have without Ramos. Well, duh. If you take away the best player from any team, they probably wouldn't have won as much. But also aren't the same without Messi. Real Madrid weren't the same without Ronaldo last year. I'm not quite sure what you're getting at here. Um, yeah, if you don't have one of the best defenders ever or one of the best players in your club, you probably wouldn't have won as much. Um, Ashish Balmik has said, Kane is never going to win the league title with Spurs. Correct. Do I want Kane to leave? <laughs> Absolutely not. Do I blame him if he leaves? Absolutely not. He wants to go on and win trophies and win titles and be part of Champions League winning sides. Spurs are not getting there in the current situation, or it looks like within the next few years, so um, for a start. So yeah, Kane would need to leave if he wants to win trophies. That's not to say he will. Um, I think that his injury worries may put a few clubs off. Um, he's going to be entering his prime next season. He's 27. They say that those are the years. He's obviously still very good. I'm not sure clubs will be paying the amount that Spurs and Daniel Levy will want for Harry Kane. Um, and I also think this, oh, he needs to leave to win trophies. Someone wrote a comment about Jan Oblak needing to leave to win trophies. I mean, yeah, I'm sure every top player would love to leave and go to Barcelona or Real or Bayern or Juve and win trophies. But these teams can't sign everybody. You have to remember that some players have a great career and maybe don't win so many trophies and that's that. Like, it's not... It, you can't point to a player who's not at a top team and say, oh, weak mentality, he needs to lead to win trophies. Because otherwise, like only Man City and Liverpool would have players. Everyone else would just be fielding fans every week. <laughs> like, not everyone can play for the biggest teams. Uh, and lastly but not least, uh, every basketball has said Matt could pull off the bald look. No. Good Lord. I've had some embarrassing hairstyles throughout the years, but my word, me bald is not a thing. Maybe. Maybe if I'm still doing the Daily News in like 20 years and I'm bald, you'll be like, I knew it. I knew Matt could pull it off. Absolutely not. I don't think so. And I'm not going to be trying anytime soon. Anyway, thank you so much for all of your opinions. 
As I say, every single Sunday night in the YouTube community tab is where I'll post something where you can leave your TFW opinions. That has been all though. Um, let me know your thoughts to all of these, as we mentioned before, in the comment section down below. Smash the like button whilst you're there and stay up to date with all the other one football videos we've got by clicking here or here. Can't do it at the same time because I'll drop the iPad. Anyway, that's all from me. I'll see you guys next time. It's the night. Uh, we